Okay, we want to find the intercepts and the asymptotes, and this is the function that we're going to be looking at. Uh, we want to find, uh, for the rational functions, there's different rules for finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept. First of all, for x-intercept, the rule for finding that is that you want to take the top, and you're going to set the top equal to zero. Now normally, you would, x-intercept is where the y equals zero, so if you have a zero in there for y and you were to cross multiply or multiply both sides by x plus two, you'd end up just having a zero equal the top. So that's why for x-intercepts, if, if the top number is zero, the whole thing is gonna be zero. So that's what we're gonna do. So we have zero equals two x minus 12. And when you solve for this, you're going to get x is equal to six. That means that the x-intercept is gonna cross the x-axis at six. Next, you wanna find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is no different than any other one. You would put a zero in there for x. So you put a zero in both places for x, and it'll look like this. You have two times zero minus 12 over zero plus two. That's gonna give you negative six. So it'll cross the y-axis at negative six. Next, I wanna find my vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So if you look at the notes for the, the VA, the vertical asymptote, the rule is you wanna take the bottom one and you're gonna set the bottom one equal to zero. The bottom one in this case is gonna be x plus two, so you're gonna set x plus two equal to zero and solve, and you're gonna get x is equal to negative two. When you write your answer, you wanna make sure that you have the x equals in there as part of it, because this is actually an equation for a line, so if you don't put the x equals, it's not considered correct, because the vertical asymptote is actually the equation of a line, so make sure you remember to put the x equals in there. Likewise, for the horizontal asymptote, that's always gonna start with y equals something. So for the horizontal asymptote, you wanna go through and look at the notes. The notes talk about three different rules and it talks about how you would find the horizontal asymptote based on those rules. Basically the way it works is you wanna look at the highest power on the top and the highest power on the bottom. The highest power on top, that's called N. The highest power on the bottom is called M. So I give three different uh, conditions and notes for N and M, and we're comparing those. Now for the horizontal asymptote in our case, we have that the highest power on top, the N, is equal to the highest power on the bottom, that's our M. So N equals M, that's the second rule that's in the notes if you take a look at those. The second rule says that if the highest power on top and bottom is the same, that's what we have going on here, because the highest power is one, highest power down there is one, then what happens is, uh, you're just gonna divide the two leading coefficients. That's what the rule says to do. So in that case, you're gonna say that y is equal to two divided by m, or two divided by one, and you're dividing these coefficients, so two over one will give you two. So therefore, the equation for your horizontal asymptote, again, you need the y equals there as part of your answer, it's gonna be y equals two. So that's rule number two. If the highest power on top is less than the highest power on the bottom, then you have a horizontal asymptote of zero automatically. And if you have the higher power on top, and the, and the highest power on top is more than the highest power on the bottom there, then you don't have any horizontal asymptote and you have a slant. So again, you wanna make sure you look at those three different rules for uh, the horizontal asymptote, and that's how you're gonna answer that one. Vertical though, the vertical asymptote, no matter what, it's always the bottom one's gonna be equal to zero.